uh, someone's here, so I'm admitting it. Let's go. Yeah. So it's sharp seven. We'll just start in a couple of minutes. Okay, great. I see some familiar names joining in. Hi, Sonal. Uh, could you decide, have we met before? Hello. Uh, hi, Gudrit. Uh, yes, I have heard about you. No, we haven't met. Uh, I am. I. I have just uh, come. I am a law graduate since two thousand two, but uh, okay. I'm mother and wife of an army officer. So a long sabbatical since I started my career again previous uh, this last year. So I have completed my mediation from Indian Law Institute and my ADR from Nalsar Hyderabad just in June. Um, completed my uh, alternate dispute resolution post-graduation. Super, that's wonderful to know. So where are you based out of now? Delhi or Hyderabad? New Delhi, New Delhi. And New I Delhi. have floated this rectitude ADR uh, mm -hmm. in September itself. So aiming towards mediation, primarily but uh, open to arbitration and conciliation also because mediation bill was not passed i had yeah. heard <laughs> because now uh, let us hope so basically i have also been a school teacher uh, since you know in uh, suburbs in kargil in uh, all places where my husband was posted uh, so uh, lot of uh, inclination towards peer mediation or doing something for the <laughs> kids basically so this is primarily a you know a giving back to society what we have got now <laughs> that's so, really yeah. nice you know we should definitely uh, connect uh, i don't i think maybe we are linkedin friends uh, and that's why your name uh, 
uh, rang a bell. But we should definitely connect if you're you've been a school teacher, and I think YCM can definitely benefit from your experience as well. And if you're passionate about mediation, we should do sure, something sure. together. Sure, I think mediator Vikram is a common, uh, uh, I mean, connection, okay. and uh, okay. he he's going to soon. Uh, I mean, I'm connected on Facebook as well with him. He's going to soon, uh, okay. you know, start on my on Thursday. He's starting some. Uh, uh, talk or uh, you know uh, discussion on that bill <laughs> let's hope okay. everything you know comes up and we're able to do and Super. you really you really uh, you really done good i was reading your uh, you know you are founder of icm and really doing good uh, my my best wishes to you <laughs> thank good. you thank you uh, on 11th of november we are doing a webinar with Chitra Narayan, uh, Dr. Aman Hingorani, and Chitu Nagarajan on mediation's growth in India, and we will be speaking about Will as well. So look out for that one. Sure, sure. I, I, I'll join it. I'll join. It's Great. Good. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Pleasure's all mine. I just unmute unmute myself. All right. Great. With that, we are at 7.5 p.m. So as per Indian Standard Time, I think we are good to start. <laughs> uh, so very warm welcome to everyone who is uh, present here today. I think what connects each one of us is uh, our faith, passion, or questions around uh, the theme of today, citizen empowerment converts conflicts into growth opportunities. Uh, in life, conflicts are definitely Inevitable, uh, however, whether those conflicts turn into disputes or growth opportunities is a choice that each one of us uh, makes. I am Kudrat Dev, uh, a mediator, conflict coach, and most importantly, the founder of YCM, India's first youth conflict management and mediation initiative. And today, uh, we have a whole lot of youth power uh, will be, who will be speaking during this uh, keynote uh, talk and with that I invite them to please introduce themselves. Uh, thank you, Kudrat. Good evening, everybody. I'm Bala. I'm one of the conveners of YCM in Jindal Global Law University. I'm also a YCM certified conflict manager and mediator. Hi, uh, my name is Shreya Skafle. I'm also one of the conveners in um, YCM DGU. I study in Jindal Global Law School and I am a certified conflict manager. Hello everyone, my name is Aparpa Datta and I'm a fourth year law student. In the past year, I have been trained and certified as a youth conflict manager and mediator at YCM. Currently, I'm working as a convener at YCM Jeju with my fellow colleagues. Hey guys, good evening. My name is Aditya Aran. I'm also, like my friends, I, friends, I'm also a certified as well as an, an accredited mediator from YCM. And yeah, we are super excited for today and looking forward to a great session with all of you. Hi everybody, I am Sudiksha Ravlani. I am a third year law student based out of Mumbai and I am also an accredited mediator from YCM. Hi everyone, I am Bhavna Arul, a final year law student and I am also a YCM accredited mediator and I am also the co-head of the um, YCM Adas and I lead the team from Hyderabad. I am super excited for today's session and the rest of the week. Great. Uh, I think that was a super start. And uh, on behalf of the YCM team, once again, a warm welcome to each one of you. We are really passionate and do believe that citizens like you should know that you can resolve it. So with that, we'd like to hear a little bit from uh, those who've joined today. And we have a fun true and false survey. I request uh, Meghna, who's the moderator for today to put the link to that survey in this chat box. What's interesting about this true of depends absolutely on how you have experienced different situations in relation to conflicts and disputes in your life. And uh, we are at 7, 5, 7, 9 p.m. right now. So I would give everybody two minutes to fill this survey and ask yourself, where are you with dispute resolution? 
Meghna, can we also show the true and false statements? So this is how the survey looks. And the first statement is, I will never have a minor disagreement, a heated argument, or a full-blown fight with anyone. Statement two is, my school equipped me with skills to deal with conflicts by addressing them positively and taking ownership to find solutions on my own. Statement three, I prefer to have you decide the solution to my problem rather than find one on my own. Statement four, I think suppressing conflicts is a sustainable way of living with diverse people in the society. And finally, statement five, which was the cover page of our presentation today, unresolved disputes and unaddressed conflicts negatively impact your peace of mind, growth, productivity, and relationships. Are we at 7-Eleven? With that, we are at 7-Eleven. Uh, as I shared earlier, there aren't any wrong or right answers, but we'll be revealing the results of uh, your responses and responses that we have received in the past whenever we've asked these statements to uh, diverse audience demographics uh, to just share with you what does India feel about these statements. So, Bhavna, if you can go back to the presentation. So the real question that we want, not just India, but every region in the world to ask, is the dispute resolution system in their country actually providing resolution? Where is the term resolution having real meaning in the dispute resolution system? And now we would like to reflect with you and share our views from India. So in India, we think we have a cycle of disputes and maybe not necessarily dispute resolution. And why is that? Firstly, we know a conflict always starts with two parties or two entities who disagree or have different positions. Then the community gets involved or a law authority or local authority gets involved. And what they want is law, order, and harmony to be in place. If the situation further escalates, maybe you have lawyers who get involved. Lawyers are engaged to represent parties. What do these lawyers want? They want to win the case for their client as per what's permissible under law. And they want to be a part of landmark cases to fill in those gaps that our law has and help in building jurisprudence, right? Now, once the lawyers are involved, of course, we will have third party neutrals who will also get involved. They could either be ADR facilitators, arbitrators, mediators, who work towards some sort of settlement agreement for the parties or some sort of narrowing down of disputes. If it's arbitration, then it's a private adjudicatory system. But we also know that in arbitration, parties always have the right to challenge the award, go ahead, an appeal, and if they don't go to arbitration, then they could even directly go to litigation and approach a court. There, we see judges and arbitrators, right? What do judges want? They want to give a decision as per the law, something that cannot be challenged. And the hard fact is they have pressure to dispose of cases and deal with the large amount of pendency that our court system is facing. And what do the parties? in the conflict want, right? That's where this cycle started from. What do they want? 
the answer is simple they want less problems in life they want to focus on doing what they primarily have to do right which could be leading their lives leading their professions now after a judgment is given parties are again feel again free to either appeal against it or to find loopholes to say that hey i will find a way of not following this judgment or this judgment does not address all the aspects of our dispute because law did not recognize some aspects of the dispute and then the cycle continues either it could be through appeal or it could be through other mechanisms where the judgment is not actually be actually given effect or the dispute between the parties has not really been addressed so what is the solution how can we use citizen empowerment as a solution is mediation the answer prima facie yes in theory definitely yes because we see mediation as a party centric and party driven process but then why is mediation also failing in india or if i have to put it in a more subtle way i would ask why is mediation not maxing out its potential in india yet the answer lies in four problems that our indian dispute resolution culture faces problem number 1 dependency versus ownership right from childhood until we become adult citizens we are depending on a third person to tell us if we are right or wrong we've learned that binary language we had a true and false statement for you where we asked in school were you equipped with skills to take ownership of conflicts and address them more than 95% of people that we've surveyed across different demographics in the past years have said no they weren't right so there's a clear system of dependency problem number 2 we demand change versus becoming the change demanding change is important but it has its limitations yes the state has the responsibility to provide access to justice and to provide a good legal system for its citizens however we need to realize the limitations of what the system can do with the power of citizens we can really become the change so we need that mind shift change problem number 3 be it litigation arbitration or even mediation parties tend to surrender their power to this third party to say hey find me a outcome give me a decision yes i came here with a problem instead of taking support they completely surrender their power and in my own experience it's been highly dissatisfying to see clients who've made it right up to the supreme court saying i don't know why i am here i don't know why i've spent 30 years here yes i've gotten a judgment in my favor but this is not what i wanted my problem is still not addressed so how do we ensure that citizens only take support and not surrendering their power to the entire system and then feeling lost problem number 4 culture of suppress versus address and for the indian audience here i will use a little bit of hindi to say ignore corona abhi itni badi baat nahi hui hai which basically means overlook it it's not become a big deal yet so why address it rather suppress it and live with it so these are the cultural problems that i see from india when we look at our dispute resolution system but there is one solution not only to make our dispute resolution system successful but also to make a beautiful process like mediation work and the answer is citizen empowerment megna can we move to the next slide yeah the next the slide after this so what is ycm doing for citizen empowerment we have adopted a three fold strategy focus train and collectivize we are focusing on building conflict management skills as life skills not just as professional skills but as life skills for citizens to deal with inevitable conflicts we train youth as conflict managers and mediators and are building india's first youth network of conflict managers and mediators some of them are present here with us today and will be speaking to you soon third we collectivize the power of the youth to set up structures centers physical and virtual 
for providing community mediation and conflict management services. We've also set up Adda's where we are making training really accessible, affordable to people from all backgrounds, not just law students, not just law aspirants, not just law professionals, but everybody. So it's time to ask you again. As we're talking about citizen empowerment and agency, we have a question for y'all. And uh, I would request y'all to respond in the chat box. Y'all can write either one or two. So we invite you to choose between these two options. When you look at yourself in a dispute, what do you choose? Option one, getting stuck in the cycle of disputes. Or option two, realizing that, okay, I have a situation with someone, let me talk it out and let's try to address it and close it here in itself. Okay, I see some responses coming in the chat box. So just to uh, clarify here, right? So when we asked, we did this poll in the past, someone said, hey, are you asking me what do I generally do or what I think I should be doing? Right, so that's the gap, right? That, that's where the difference is. So here the question to you is, what do you intentionally want to choose? But also ask yourself, reflect at the conflicts and disputes that you faced in your life. What do you really do? Do you involve others? Do you become dependent on others? Or try, do you try to take ownership of the situation and address it there and then, yeah? All right. Brigna, can we move to the next slide? There's another uh, option one, option two question. But before that, we have a story to share with you. This story is about a matchstick. And uh, after watching this, please let us know if you choose option one or option two. Kudrat, you're muted. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know that. So the floor is open for your responses. So Vigna, if you can press enter so that everybody can see what's option one and what's option two. So when you are faced with a conflict, what do you do? Option one, nothing about it and then wait for it to become a serious dispute. Or option two, take ownership to address it and see what good can come out of this. Okay. It's wonderful to see two rolling in the chat box. But there again, once again, I invite you to think, is this what you want to choose? And is there a difference between what you actually end up doing, right? And bridging the gap there, is citizen empowerment. So in option one, uh, when you turn it into a destructive dispute intentionally or unintentionally, or let it turn into one, what do you lose? Time, money, relationships, peace of mind, which is quite underrated in some parts of a country. And more importantly, you're distracted from what really matters, right? That was the true and false question. So we know that if you don't address a dispute, this is what's going to happen. You're going to have long-term negative consequences. However, on the other hand, if you do address the conflict, it can turn into a growth opportunity. And if you ask me to define growth opportunity, of course, I can't do that for you. To each her own, right? 
So it could be coming up with creative solutions, having a realization in terms of what you really value or getting to know the other person's perspective or having that feeling of ownership, indirect benefits that you continue to focus on what really matters, your productive, your mental health is in place. And of course, it could mean much more. So I half answered this question, but what is citizen empowerment in the context of disputes? Would anybody from the audience try to take a shot at this one? We'd love to hear from you. What is citizen empowerment in the context of disputes? Anybody? I think what we at mediation intend to do is to give them power to you know, decide what, what they want to do with their disputes and not stand mm -hmm. in front of the court a judge who judges them on, based on some laws. You know, uh, mm -hmm. a dispute is, is not just that somebody is right or wrong. It is a conflict of interests and uh, that has to be decided among themselves. They are not criminals that they have to stand in front of a judge and, you know, get judged on rights and wrongs. There can be two rights and there can be two wrongs. So uh, empowering them is like that. <laughs> That's what I feel. Thank you for sharing that uh, Sonal uh, and so many important elements have come out of that right uh, helping them to take decisions for themselves going beyond the binary of right and wrong uh, so important uh, we have other answers in the chat box from Prishika, Zoya and Lux saying giving citizens the right to make their own decisions and like Sonal said mediation is a process which enables that uh, someone else says, allow a recourse for settling disputes with tangible results. So important, right? Tangible results and not something that hangs in the air and you say, okay, I have a judgment, but now to enforce it, there's something more that I need to do, uh, but it's still not enough. Taking ownership of their actions and also be mindful of the counterparty's perspective while figuring out a way uh, to the problem. Very important. And I think that hits uh, sustainability. If you think from everybody's perspective who's involved, whatever solution you come up with, that'll definitely be sustainable. Great. So at YCM, we've defined citizen empowerment as a proactive choice to convert a conflict into a growth opportunity, to break that cycle of disputes and nail the start and end with the power, with the people who are facing that conflict with power lies in their ability to deal with that conflict. And when that happens, it's citizen empowerment. And at YCM, to make citizen empowerment possible, we are using two mechanisms. One is youth conflict management and mediation. And two, through our YCM does, which you will hear a lot more about. So the focus of citizen empowerment in the context of dispute resolution systems and culture is that disputes are resolved. If possible, disputes are prevented, right? And conflicts are proactively addressed the way you saw that uh, match stick with option one and option two. And the best case scenario will be where there's actual growth. With that, I'm happy to share that in August, uh, we had India's first youth conflict management center launch its online conflict management services at OP Jindal Global University, where dispute resolution skills are looked at life skills for all, and a collaborative mechanism of dispute resolution has been institutionalized at Jindal Global University. So with that, Youth, the way we define it, we are not limiting it to someone who is aged between 18 to 34, as uh, most organizations do. Youth is the power and the energy that lies in each and every citizen, right? Uh, anybody who is willing to take risks, to explore new things and to take ownership, I think is a young person. And uh, YCM is striving to use 
your power and youth power for citizen empowerment and access to justice. I have to have to mention organizations around the globe and in India who have inspired us. So Calm Mediation London uh, has really inspired us earlier, South Oak Mediation, where they used a peer and youth mediation model uh, where Mel has been a guide and mentor. And that's how we could bring it uh, to India. Wandsworth Mediation Service has an amazing community mediation service, which also inspires us. And of course, we have YCM JGU, which is a collaboration between YCM and Jindal Global University to set up India's first youth-run center for conflict management community mediation. And of course, we have the Adda's team. And we look forward to you and your friends joining us and becoming a part of our journey. So we'll be happy to circulate these slides uh, to those who are attending this session today. These are different community mediation centers in India and in the UK who've inspired us to do well. And with that, I invite each of you all to think of yourselves as proactive citizens working towards citizen empowerment for yourself and others, because conflicts are inevitable and you're always trying to resolve them. It could be between you, your friends, or within your community. So the power lies within you. And with that, I'd like to hand over to Bala, who is uh, the convener of ICM GGU and will share information on YCM GGU. Um, thank you, Kudrat. Maybe before I go, maybe Apurba can pitch in first. Sure. Hello, everyone. As I've introduced myself before, my name is Apurba Datta, and I'm a fourth year law student. In the past year, I have been trained at YCM as a youth conflict manager and a mediator. And currently, I'm the convener of YCM Jeju along with my fellow colleagues who will be speaking after me. Today, I will be talking about YCM JGU. As Kudrat said, YCM JGU is India's first youth-run center for conflict management and mediation services, which will be replicated across diverse educational institutions in India. YCM JGU is a pioneer collaboration between YCM, India's first youth conflict management and mediation initiative, and the clinical programs at OP Jindal Global University. Currently, the youth part of 40 students run YCM JGU under the guidance of Professor Ajay Pandey and Kudrat Dev, the founder of YCM. The youth trainees from JGU and communities around have completed over 60 hours of online training with additional practical work in conflict management levels 1, 2, and 3. A YCM certified youth conflict managers will be providing pro bono conflict management services to enable parties in a conflict to realize the power within themselves to find their own sustainable and non adversarial solution. After all, we all believe in the Gandhian saying, peace is not the absence of conflict, but the ability to deal with it. Now I will be showcasing a short video to show you all the journey of YCM Jeju. Please play the video. Apurva, maybe we can come back to it uh, once it's ready. And Meghna, we can go back to the question. Uh, could you just take a minute? It just takes just a minute to load. Uh, it are you planning to go to educational institutes and schools also? You're planning to start this? Yeah. Yes, we are already in conversation. That's there. really good. That's really good.
Thank you for insisting. Purva, it's always wonderful watching that video. Uh, yeah. I, I now would like to take a moment uh, for all of us over here to introduce you to our core team uh, who strive to build a healthy work environment apart from enabling individuals to resolve conflicts in an amicable manner. Uh, the conveners are Shreyas, Bala, me, Meghna, and Rasika. And we have our coordinators, Ankit, uh, Gitika, Ananya, Aishwarya, and Alan. Uh, can we move on? Uh, we conducted a survey at Jindal before forming our center, as you saw in the video, and the survey overwhelmingly revealed the importance of YCM. While more than 97% of the students who were surveyed agreed that there was violence on the campus. Next slide. More than 60% stated that it went unreported. Uh, can we move on to the next slide? Most stated that the disciplinary committee existing in our university is not uh, dealing with the conflicts uh, in a sufficient manner and agree that the students themselves should be involved in the conflict management process. Uh, make another slide before. Yeah, uh, students resolving their own conflicts is the most preferred process as students consider it the easiest and the most effective because they believe it's amicable resolving without serious consequences and not involving authorities is the best possible chance to actually get to introspect the conflict and come up with solutions. As you can see, we have a diverse group of uh, people in our organizing committee, whether we, it be our gender, whether it be from various disciplines. We also have people from various parts of the country. Now, I would like to uh, hand over to my colleague Bala, who will speak. Um, thank you, Apurva. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about the conflict management center that Kudrat mentioned that we have launched at Jindal Global University. So currently we have around 12 certified conflict managers and uh, this involves both students and also practicing lawyers and even other community members around Sonipat where our college is located. And we also have six uh, certified mediators. So what? So till now we have done around thirty six sessions, and mostly these sessions were conducted with students from Jindal Global uh, Law University. So the nature of conflicts that our service dealt with included uh, conflicts that people had with team members while they were representing uh, our university in competitions, relationship conflicts, um, and there were like conflicts between two societies uh, in our university and conflicts that they faced with co-workers um, during internship. And because currently we have an online semester, we saw a lot of conflicts that arose from household that we had to like sort of deal with through our service. So um, at YCM, we want to take constructive criticism and want to ensure that we grow from those criticisms. So we ensure that we get feedback from all our clients. So we, uh, so based on the feedback that we have received till now, it has, uh, it's, uh, we have successfully, uh, we have successful results regarding our services. So most of the people, more than 93% of the people um, said that they've had a new outlook uh, and they wanted to reevaluate their past conflicts after a session. And many mentioned that uh, after the sessions, they felt like maybe they could have dealt with the conflict in a different way and uh, they could have reacted it uh, in a different way. So something that we learned during our training is that we should emphasize on self to society. Kudrat used to mention during training that you should first practice what you preach and then sort of help others uh, deal with the same. So as someone who kind of uh, had a hard time empathizing with others, um, the, the training really helped for me to build empathy. So during the session, what we did was we took conflicts from our own personal life, and then we used that to practice uh, uh, as conflict managers. So this really helped us to sort of understand uh, how an actual session could be conducted. So as a result, when we did the actual sessions, we were able to uh, aid the clients more and help them understand more what empathy and other values that we, we were taught during the training uh, were. 
and uh, and most of them also found uh, the session to be very informative and helpful. And at YCM, we encourage people to take ownership of their own conflict, which means that they should uh, understand, come up with their own strategies, and also understand their own feelings and needs uh, on their own. So we were very happy to see that our clients were also able to um, sort of resonate with that need for taking ownership of your own conflict. Yeah, we also wanted to ensure that our conflict managers um, are uh, up to the mark and they continuously provide good service. So we also asked them to rate our conflict managers and also the services they provided. So here also all the uh, all the clients may, uh, have mentioned that they are extremely happy with the services that have been provided by YC. Yeah, so uh, we also, uh, so a lot of people mentioned that they found the session to be extremely informative and helpful. And some mentioned that it was uh, life-changing and they said that they, they were able to deal with future conflicts in a better way. They mentioned about ownership and they mentioned about empathy. So we were happy to see that whatever we talked about during this session was something that people could uh, take away with themselves. So we were very happy to see those results. So now I invite uh, Shreyas, who's also a convener, uh, to talk a little bit about uh, future opportunities that YCM Juju has. Thank you, Bala. Uh, so we mentioned about a lot of our successes and how, how we handled this uh, first phase of our uh, conflict management center, but we got to acknowledge that we also had a lot of challenges. And to bring in the most important challenge that all of us are facing is going online. We have been pushed to go online in this uh, due to the sudden pandemic. And this important issue that we have is a network and connectivity issues. We all have had internet connectivity issues. And even during the sessions, we noticed how much uh, network and connectivity issues impacted the sessions. Uh, our conflict management sessions, the voices of the, our people, uh, of the people who participated broke, and it was a little difficult to, uh, to uh, handle this uh, sessions when it was online. Secondly, uh, as we all know, we all have some experience in terms of mediation. Uh, mediation is something that requires a lot of nonverbal communication, nonverbal cues, visual cues, and these cues are very difficult and uh, difficult to understand in an online mode. And this is something that we also faced while conducting our conflict management sessions. And understanding and reading these cues is has been pretty difficult for us. And of course, uh, we cannot ignore this. I think all of us go through this: is disturbance uh, during the sessions. Pets, they're incredibly cute, but they bark when we are working. Um, and of course we have construction noises. Uh, we sometimes have disturbance from family members who drop in during the middle of the session and ruin the flow. So this is something that we need to acknowledge. And that is something that we have noticed during our sessions. And lastly, again, like I mentioned, we have been forced to move into this uh, online mode. So. Clients still have a preference for physical sessions. And let's face it, physical sessions are better and online sessions have not yet reached that stage. But again, like we, like we said, we at this organization, we look at challenges as opportunities. What can we do about it? How, how do we solve these challenges? So what we're gonna do is to solve this issue where in the future we're planning on partnering with ODR institution online dispute resolution platforms that bring human connections to technology, which will solve this issue. Of course, the tech is developing and as we grow, we are looking forward to partnering with these uh, institutions. And of course the COVID situation is getting better. So we are focusing on a hybrid mode. So of course we're also gonna continue physical mode, but you also gotta understand that while it's challenging, online modes also have some advantages. So we are focusing on creating a hybrid mode and partnering with tech that has human connection. Now, apart from, uh, apart from the technological funds, we are also planning on conducting services in Hindi and English. We need to understand that, there, uh, that we need to include everyone in this journey. Everyone needs to be empowered with this beautiful concept of conflict management. And we are going to 
do this. We are going to conduct sessions in Hindi. So folks, community members around Sony Park, and even as we expand with ODR around the country can use this session and understand and uh, be enlightened with the power of conflict management. We are also collaborating with societies in JGU. We have already collaborated with the ADR society. We have already, we're gonna, we're, we're in constant talks with other societies because this is something that requires a team effort and we are looking for allies and we have already built allies in our journey. We are, again, uh, we are focusing on collaborating with the community. Uh, and members, community members around Sonipath, because we want to spread this vision. We want to empower the youth. We want to empower, empower everyone to take in charge of their conflicts. So uh, we have been collaborating with the conflict community. How have we been collaborating with the community? We have uh, been uh, in constant talks with the district legal authority. We have been in talks with certain, with a lot of government and organizational, uh, uh, government and private organizations. We have also been talking with uh, uh, with paralegal uh, volunteers. So we 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 are willing on expanding um, this uh, 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 this journey, this uh, this amazing concept uh, around the community. And uh, we, we, we believe that the community needs to be part of this. And we have been working on community relations since the beginning. Uh, we, a lot of our conflict managers who have been trained are from the community. And it, it's, it's an amazing experience to spread this beautiful concept to everyone. And of course, one more opportunity that we have realized is 60% uh, is of the folks who took our, uh, who took our services want to be trained as conflict managers. And we see that as a remarkable opportunity because this, is, uh, this shows how beautiful and how strong this concept is and how much it empowers people to take, on, uh, to, uh, take in charge of their own uh, conflicts. And like Bala mentioned that we first focus on solving our own conflicts. We, serve, we, we practice these problems on our own. And I believe that is why our, uh, our, uh, our uh, uh, clients want to be trained as well. So these are the challenges and opportunities, and this brings the end to this slide. Uh, next slide, please. Yes. So please join us in this youth-led peace revolution of uh, building and taking ownership on your own conflict management. And of course, and never forget that you can resolve it. And um, let's let's do this and let's let's get this working. Thank you. Um, yeah. Hey guys, hello. Am I audible, Kudra? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, YCM GHU team, for having such a great session. So I think it's our time now. So, firstly, I would like to thank IEMAW uh, for creating this platform and Kudrat for giving us this opportunity to put forth our initiative and ideas to an international audience through this platform. Uh, Dina, can you please change the slide? Yeah, thank you. So, I'll just take a few seconds to quickly introduce myself again for the new joinees. <laughs> Uh, I am Aditya Aren, a fourth year law student and a mediator accredited by YCM and the co-founder of YCM Conflict Management Adda for Patna and Dehradun. So we are a team uh, of three. You can see here in the slide itself, guided, supervised, and supported by our own Kodrat Dev. And we are working towards training people about conflict management and mediation as we believe in self to society. The reason I believe mediation is failing in India, in addition to what Kudrat mentioned, and has not reached its potential in India is because of people not being aware of this consensual dispute resolution process. And I believe this International Mediation Awareness Week is the perfect and best place to put forth our points. See, I, uh, we, most of us here are law students. And I, as a law student, was unaware of mediation till last year. And I believe there are many like me who still aren't aware of this process. Our team feels the same. And for the reason, we came up with, the, with these conflict management addas, where we aim to provide skills and knowledge about conflict management and mediation to the participants. Uh, Meghna, can you please change this slide? Yeah, thank you. 
So till now, we have conducted five sessions with five extremely legends. We can call them legends uh, in their respective industries. So these are all expert friends of YCM and they include uh, Ishani Ma'am. Uh, we conduct a session on 1st of August. Uh, she's the director of learning voyages at Prava. Uh, on 8th of August, we had Supriya Chavla, ma'am. She's the head of Shaving Scholarship uh, for the British High Commission. And to those who don't know, Kudrat herself is a Shaving Scholar from India. So, yeah. So, on 15th of August, we had Jeevan Vallapanda, who is an arbitrator and partner at Khatan and Company, one of the leading law firms of, of India. On 29th of August, we have we had Prerna Kohli, ma'am. She is one of the leading mediators of India, as well as the founder and senior uh, founding member and senior partner of Zeus Law. And on 29th of October, we had a personal favorite, Mr. E.J. Jawad, whom you will also uh, get to see tomorrow. And I urge you people to join tomorrow to see his impeccable mediation skills. We'll be having a mock mediation tomorrow. So yeah, uh, within the span of these two to three months, we had uh, we have conducted five sessions with five extremely expert and legend people in their fields. So till now, we have more than 300 people that includes 40.6% of male participation as well as 59.4% uh, of female participation who have registered to our adult. And we saw students from different backgrounds, which included engineering, design, management, stu management students, as well as professionals, advocates between the age of 18 to 45. That means not only law graduates, but people, students from uh, other backgrounds as well are willing to learn about conflict management. They are willing to learn uh, the owner to take ownership of their disputes. And that is quite evident from our uh, Addas and the initiatives we have uh, been doing over the past couple of months. So, and in the, in these Addas, we dealt with top topics as to how to address and not suppress conflicts, the importance of active listening and empathy in resolving conflicts. And we made the participants practice conflict management on their personal disputes, as well as hypothetical societal disputes so that they can get to know how this works. There's, we can't, we can't ask people to learn everything from theory. We need to have something practical in order to let them understand. So we had uh, we made the participants practice conflict management and mediation skills on personal disputes as well as societal disputes. And the previous month, we had a proper mediation and negotiation simulation where the participant mediated a hypothetical dispute. Uh, can you please change the slide, Megna? Yeah, thank you. So these addas are a place where people get an insight into how dispute resolution skills and dispute prevention skills can be life skills. We let our participants pick up small, small techniques such as active listening, empathy, to full-blown skills such as mediation, where they get insight uh, and they apply it in breakout rooms on their own conflict. And these are very simple skills um, that they can quickly apply into their lives and see immediate benefits. Our larger visions, a larger vision through YCM. Uh, is to equip people with conflict management and mediation skills so that they can prevent and resolve conflicts and dispute before it turns out as a raging fire. The skills that our participants learned have helped them immensely. And as per the feedback we have received, uh, that will be taken care by Bhavna later in the uh, session. They say that after attending these sessions, they feel more confident while handling conflicts and difficult situations. I'm hopeful and I believe that this training will help them in approaching disputes with a different mindset of resolving them as compared to the traditional form of adversarial process. See, now, when I talk about justice, it is not always what we have been taught. I have, I'm a fourth year law student. So as a student of law in these past four years, I have been taught that justice is given when the court or the adjudicating authorities give their verdict in the favor of one party. And to be very honest, I used to believe in this super religious. But after I got introduced to mediation, my, perce my perception changed. Now, what I think about justice is different as compared to what I used to think before. Now, justice to me is when the needs and interests of the disputing parties are met and they reach a settlement that is acceptable to both the parties or all the disputing parties. And therefore, it makes a win-win situation for the disputants. So these are, uh, there are absolutely exceptions, but these are generally my thoughts. Now, my friends Bhavna and Sudiksha will be taking over on how these youth haddas and youth power can create access to justice culture and life skills to all. 
Uh, over to you, Sudiksha. Thank you, Aditya. Hi, everybody. I am Sudiksha Ravlani. Just to quickly introduce myself again, I am a third year law student based out of Mumbai and an accredited mediator from YCM. Uh, I am going to speak about uh, I'm going to speak on how do these youth addas create a justice culture. So when we talk about justice, uh, we believe justice is uh, amicably satisfying the interests and needs of citizens. And it's a cherry on the cake when citizens create justice by themselves. That is when they themselves recognize uh, each other's needs and interests and resolve their disputes amicably. This is what we are trying to do uh, with the help of these youth addas. Through these youth, youth addas, we're building uh, citizens' skills and spreading awareness amongst them that uh, they can create justice by themselves. This being said, uh, I feel one of the major problems we face in India is that people don't believe in mediation. While helping parties come to an agreeable solution sounds nice, but to make the parties believe in mediation and to actually bring them to the table is a task. We need people to believe that mediation has the potential to provide an expeditious, economical and private resolution of the problems that they face. So to fill this gap, we run these youth addas where we train youth with mediation skills. We firmly believe in youth power and we feel if youth is trained and equipped with mediation skills and made aware about the power of mediation, they can really make a difference. We intend to spread as much awareness about mediation as we can by holding these youth addas because I think believing in the process is the first step towards a successful mediation. We intend on creating a community of these youth peacemakers by training them with essential skills of a mediator. We feel having spread awareness about mediation amongst youth and having built a community of such peacemakers shall eventually create a justice culture. So if I had to answer in a line, how, how do these youth addas create a justice culture? Uh, it is by spreading awareness about mediation amongst youth and by training youth with mediation skills. Now, uh, Bhavna will be taking over on how these youth addas help youth gain life skills. Over to you, Bhavna. Hi, Sadiksha. Thank you so much for passing it over to me after everyone else has done. It's been great listening to all of you for the past hour. And I'm pretty sure over the past hour, most people would have forgotten who I am. So I'm going to do a quick introduction of myself again. So hi everyone, I'm Bhavna Arul. I'm a final year law student and a YCM accredited mediator. I'm based out of Hyderabad and being a final year law student, a lot of my perspectives, uh, so what I'm gonna be talking is a lot from my perspective, what my viewpoint has been. So um, first I would like to discuss about where, where mediation stands in India. So mediation in India has definitely not reached its full potential. And I would like to discuss why in two, uh, by dividing it into two parts. The first part is discussing it through educational institutes. Uh, Meghna, it'd be great if you could shift to the next slide. Thank you so much. Yeah, so in educational institutes, like we have the survey at the start of this um, session put forth by Kudras, we realized that in educational institutes, not a lot of people are trained to manage their conflicts. They don't even understand what conflict resolution is. Be, be it at school, be it at college, not a lot of colleges or schools really focus on that in India. And of course you have places like Jindal that's really changing it for now, but the larger picture, yes, it's definitely not there. And I'm a law student, a final year law student in fact. So I've spent five years, five good, amazing years in law school. And during these five years, I realized that mediation is just something that is um, restricted to a one hour webinar where you have a speaker coming and speaking the whole time or to a competition where students don't know what they're doing. They're just going there, they're preparing from based out of a YouTube video because that's what I did in my first mediation competition. 
So that's all mediation in India right now is from a youth perspective. And like Sudiksha had said, without having the youth understand it, how is the message going to spread? Awareness starts with the youth. So now I would like to move on to the next perspective, which is the Indian society perspective. So the Indian society perspective is something that I've observed and I've also heard a couple of great mediators tell me like Javad sir was also telling me this the other day. So it basically states that from a very young age in India, we've been taught that uh, you have a third person who would come in and help you resolve your conflict. So for example, when me and my brother used to fight when we were kids, I would always have my mom or my dad come in and say, Bhavna, don't, don't do this or Madhu, don't do that. And say I have a fight with a friend in school, I would have a teacher immediately step in and say, don't do this, don't do that. You, what you're doing is wrong, what you're doing is right. So this mentality is taught to us at a very young age. And I understand that to a certain, ex uh, to a certain extent that this is how discipline is formed, but you also kind of uh, forget to take ownership for your own disputes at such a point of time. So when you're growing up, this practice continues. So say you have a dispute with a spouse, with your spouse, you have relatives stepping in and saying, uh, I think you should adjust here. I think, um, I, I don't think what you did was right. And say you have a workplace dispute, you have your boss then coming and stepping in, or you have a HR team that's so ready to step in. And when we don't have any third party that is willingly stepping in, we then take the dispute out to a lawyer, take it to courts and absolutely blow up the dispute. So this is how the Indian society really functions when it comes to dispute. We have absolutely lost ownership of our own dispute. And that's precisely why mediation is not growing in India. So now that I've discussed these two aspects, the educational institute aspect and the Indian society aspect, I would like to move on to how the idea of the Addas came up. So what is it that we do in our Addas? So in our Addas, we train people. And um, Megna, can you move on to the next slide? Thank you. Yeah, so in our ADAS, we train people and we take in three very important life skills into our training. The first one is address, not the press. The next is active listening and the last being empathy. So we believe that whenever there is a conflict, you should address it and not suppress it. You shouldn't wait for it to absolutely blow up and go absolutely out of hand. And when you are... Um, when you are putting your conflict out, it is important that the other person actively listens. And this also applies to you. So when someone comes up to you and they are trying to address their conflict with you, you also need to learn to actively listen. And this is where a very important uh, element comes in, which is of empathy. And whenever, uh, whenever you're actively listening to someone, also try empathizing with what they're saying. So if you empathize with what they're saying, you will definitely have a different perspective. You will be able to look at the conflict from their shoes. And this is essentially what the essence of the Adda is. So, uh, it'll be nice. Meghna, can you please move on to the next slide? So, uh, in our, uh, in our uh, Addas, we give a lot of stimulations and everything so that people learn to... Um, they, they learn the practical approach of conflict management mediation and mediation and negotiation are two things that we um, solemnly swear by because we understand that these are the two founding pillars for conflict resolution. So when we are teaching everyone that, we also make sure we have a lot of practical um, approach. We, we give them a lot of simulations and we give them a lot of feedback so that they learn where they're going right and where they're going wrong. And based out of our conflict management address, we've got some great feedback. Um, so I guess I am the last speaker for today. So I think it's great that we're also ending up with these great feedbacks from our previous session. So like the feedback says, so let me just read them out. So one of the participants had said that the uh, whole event has taught me to understand my own as well as other conflicts in life and how to peacefully mediate a conflict. Then we had another participant say it was great. It was a great event overall and very informative. I'm glad I decided to join the event as I learned a lot through this entire event. And mind you, these events were conducted on Sundays. So people were ready to wake up on Sunday mornings at the attendees and they absolutely loved it. Um, so again, my favorite segment was the mediation simulation, which involved the participants acting as mediators and the parties. 
it may the whole mediation process more understandable and help practic uh, practicalize it i also like the feedback because it highlighted the skills which are most important in the mediation process as a fresher with as a fresher with no clear understanding in this field the event was successful in explaining the process of mediation and i think this is just one little part of the feedback we've got we've had a ton of extremely nice feedback and i think this would be a good time for me to ask godraj if we could have the feedback form circulated and we can continue with the amazing feedback we've been receiving for all our events uh before we uh, get into that can we please have a round of applause for all these young people over here who've done so well in putting up this uh, show but also being so passionate about mediation and conflict management i am extremely proud of uh, each one of you so uh, bala shreyas apurva bhavna sudiksha aditya meghna it's amazing you're doing something extremely revolutionary in india and i'm happy and i could not have been more happy to have you uh, as a part of this journey with me as a guest i would also like to speak you know really <laughs> nice to see young i mean freshers just in college you know and in, uh, in college time when i was doing law it was 2000 and at that time we really did not have that much clear focus on what we want to or what we intend to do mm -hmm. uh, after studying after taking up law so if you have uh, this much exposure you going to a general law uh, school you It's a good institute, and you have your uh, colleges doing uh, good uh, to initiate you in this direction. And we really, you know, you are you can be the crusaders for change in the society that we want to see, and we're not doing anything about it. So you are the you guys are you are doing it. You know, you're building India. So really good. Too good. <laughs> Telling that. and uh, with that if there are any questions we are happy to take them uh, and we also again invite all of you all to please give your uh, feedback we've shared that form in the chat box and that will help us stay connected with you and also know how we can do better because we want to grow every day i know we're slightly over time actually we're 10 minutes over time uh, and i know it's dinner time and it's right after diwali for a lot of us so i appreciate everyone who's uh created time for this uh, so whoever wants to leave please feel free to leave uh, those who can give a moment to fill the feedback form that will be superb and on behalf of the ycm team if there's one thing that i want you all to take away from today's session is to know you are a citizen and you should know that you can resolve it Thank you.